Welcome back to MTG Budget Finance, Budget Magic, whatever this channel is. Today I want to talk about how you get extra value when you're trading with people without actually ripping anybody off, at least not technically. Uh, I also want to talk about how you can be a little more savvy when you're trading cards around and also just pay attention you know, to what kind of cards you're buying and if you happen to sell cards, what kind of cards you're selling. This is also one of the fundamental building blocks of how to build a collection from scratch or without spending any money. If you're trying to grind a paper collection, the way you manage that collection is extremely important because you can get to a place where you don't even have to put any more money in. You can just trade your cards around and you know play different modern decks, popper decks, maybe even build a legacy deck just through steadily grinding through trades and whatnot and increasing the value of your collection. Anyway, today we're going to talk about step one, which is just understanding prices. So when I say I'm going to trade you my $10 card for your $10 card, you're probably thinking, okay, well, that sounds about right. But that's just scratching the surface. A lot of people tend to go by uh, MTG market price or, I'm sorry, TCG player market price or TCG player mid. So I've got an example card here, Thoughtseize and I'm on MTG Goldfish which also has pricing information which I think they basically just pull from TCG Player Mid. So Goldfish has Thought Seas at $13.37 which is also the TCG Player Mid price. However the market price is at $11.26. When you see a TCG Player Mid price that's higher than the market price that could mean a few different things. It could mean that the uh, you know maybe somebody has taken down a bunch of their copies, maybe they're being bought up, but it hasn't done enough to adjust the market price yet. Um, it could mean that the prices for the card being listed are artificially high for some various reason, but they're not actually selling for that much. There's a, there, it could mean anything. It could mean the card's really hot, or it could just be an illusion. We're not going to worry about that for now. But the first thing that most people understand is you got to pay attention to what's going on because if if you have a card that's listed for say ten dollars market price and the person you're trading with has a card listed at ten dollars market price but they have different TCG player mid prices that are substantially different that's something you have to factor in because those two cards are not equal if one of them if, if you have two cards that both have the same market price but one of the cards has a substantially higher TCG player mid price that cards basically worth more so you got to figure out some way to factor that in and pay attention to that. Anyway, that's just like tier one analysis. We're going we're gonna to get to some more interesting stuff than that. All right, what we really want to look at is the liquid value of cards. That is what is so important. The random price information that you see for a pile of cards on TCG Player, while the market price and the mid price start to give you some sense that not all $10 cards, for example, are equal, the other thing is the, the depth of quantity. So if you go on and you see a card listed for $10, but there's only 20 copies listed versus another card that has 300 copies listed, that's also a huge factor because you're more likely to see a, a, a coming soon price spike on a card if the quantity is really low. Another thing you can look at as far as a liquidity factor is you can check buy list pricing. So if we go over to Card Kingdom, which is a, a, you know, a pretty good site to buy list your stuff, again, I don't get any money from Card Kingdom. I'm not sponsored or affiliated. It's just a reasonably decent place to send uh, cards in on a buy list. Now, with TC, um, with Card Kingdom, if I send them a Thoughtseize from Theros, they're going to give me $9 or $11.70 in store credit. First of all, when you send Card Kingdom cards, this is just the near mint prices. And even if you think your card's near mint, they're probably going to grade it as slight play anyway. So you're probably not actually going to get 1170 store credit, even if you take the credit after they downgrade the grading on what you thought was near mint, but they're going to call it SP, you're probably still just getting $9. All right, so let's, let's keep that in mind. But I will refer to this as an $11.70 buy list price, even though that's the credit price on near mint, which you may not get. But it's just uh, easier to, to, to refer to that. All right, next we want to look at the eBay, some eBay information. So... We're going to go to eBay. We'll do this from scratch. We're going to look up Thoughtseize. We're going to click on Buy It Now. We're going to go Sort. Now, usually the default on this is Best Match, 
but what we actually want is price plus shipping lowest first and we're looking at English copies and we're looking for Theros copies so we'll subsort it and we can see that the eBay price on this stuff is the first few copies listed are between twelve thirty and thirteen dollars which is pretty good it means the eBay price is not too far off of what the TCG player price is at now you're not seeing a huge variance on the prices on Thoughtseize because I pulled it up as a card that is going to be you know more or less uniform uh, across the board um, and it, basically what this means is if you check the actual TCG mid price whoops the actual TCG mid price on Thoughtseize this 1337 price the buy list price on this is uh, about 85 percent of its actual price which is pretty good and again I'm referring to the trade-in credit value if you take another card like Erberg Tomb of Yawgmoth this card is priced at 12.50 and buy list credit of 9.75 and this is actually sold listings uh, let's see here go ahead and get this back to let's see here let's check not currently active listings buy it now and go with the cheapest copies apparently apparently I just broke eBay there we go you're looking at about ten dollars so that's that's a little bit worse as far as the eBay price and if you actually calculate the uh, list price that you're gonna find on TCG player mid versus the buy list price for Erberg Tomb of Yalmoth you'll see that the the buy list store credit price on Card Kingdom is actually only about 78%. So that just shows you that Erberg Tomb of Yawgmoth, if you look at the percentages for what they're selling on eBay and the percentages for what you can buy list them for compared to the what I'm going to call the list price or the TCG median price, that gives you a better sense of the actual value of the card when you look at that as a percentage. The next thing you can also do, which is kind of handy, is you can go to eBay and you can look at the uh, completed auctions. Now when you do this you have to be sure it's going to, if you previously were looking at price plus shipping lowest first, it's going to give you sort of a false sense of what's going on. When you're looking at sold items you just want to change that to ended recently. So again you can start to see Ur Urberg Tomb of Yawgmoth, you know, nine, ten dollars, still a little bit on the, a little, still a little bit lower as a percentage of its list price than Theros with these Let's see again, this is lowest. So if we go to recently ended, we'll see these are 12, 13. We got two here for 20, so 10 each. But then we see the next listing, two for 26, which is actually basically 1350, which is right at actually even a little better than the list price. So we don't see dramatic, huge departures here. But one of the things that's really interesting is if you look at bigger ticket items and I'm going to use Guy's Cradle as an example. Now Guy's Cradle, this is an older card, it's a reserve list card, and it's a somewhat expensive card. So the paper price on this is $350, which is the TCG mid price. Now, the market price on this is a $30 difference. $381, that's real important. What's going on here is Guy's Cradles have been dropping in price, uh, but as, as vendors are lowering the price, uh, there's still enough previous market history to keep the market price propped up which makes a big difference if you happen to be trading off or trading into a guy's cradle now when we go to card kingdom and we are gonna check the oh yeah so basically go to card kingdom you just go sell cards and we're gonna pull it in guy's cradle and we see that their credit that they're offering is 279.50, so 2 280 versus 350, so you're down $80, which is pretty substantial. And remember, that's for near mint copies. Now, when we go to eBay, we see some sold listings here. Look at this. This is a moderate play for 275, which is pretty close to the Card Kingdom buy list price and we've got a near mint actually selling at 350 so we're going to see some some different variants here and 
let's go ahead and take a quick look at what we have active as far as some of the cheapest copies that you can buy price plus shipping lowest first it's going to bring up a bunch of junk that's not actually real but you see the cheapest copy here is an MP for 275 which is again pretty close to the buy list price for a near mint copy on Card Kingdom. Now what gets interesting is when we actually go over to TCG Player and take a look at the guy's cradle the prices that Goldfish slash TCG Player is referencing are for near mint copies so if you actually look the very first English heavy played copy is going to be $252 which is pretty good there's a moderately played German for two sixty three ninety five, and we see the first English moderately played copy for two hundred and seventy five dollars now where this gets really interesting is let's say that you bought a couple of boxes of well actually let's just say let's say you bought one box of Ultimate Masters and let's say you managed to get a hold of that box for two hundred and seventy five dollars which is not a crazy price that's not crazy high it may be a little bit on the low side now but there were earlier points in time where with uh, eBay coupons and stuff you could get two seventy five some people even did better than that but let's say you pick up a a box of ultimate masters and you crack that box and you end up with three hundred and fifty dollars worth of cards I mean most people would be pretty happy with that uh, even if you have $350 worth of cards you're gonna have a lot of cards that are worth one two three four dollars that are gonna be hard I mean it, it, that's good stuff because you can trade that put it in your binder you got to fill out your binder if you, if you do trading and such which you should um, if you if you want to grind the value but uh, you know if you add up the total value of everything you open in your box including you know cards under five dollars and you get to 350 it's it's not really the same as having one card that's worth 350 so what I'm saying is if you buy a moderately played guy's cradle for 275 you take it up to your your local card shop you know a lot of recreational casual players are not going to grade nearly as strictly as the vendors on TCG player a lot of the vendors on TCG Player are going to be really strict and what's going to happen when you buy this moderately played card the vast majority of the time if you're dealing with a seller that has a decent amount of sales and a high feedback rating that means you're going to get either a moderately played copy or you might open that up and go you know this looks more you know like it's closer to slight play and a card that's slight play in a trading environment most people aren't going to nitpick that on an old reserve list card especially if you're trading it for a handful of you know twenty thirty forty fifty dollar cards and most people will will not only trade with you in that manner but they will be extremely grateful to have had an opportunity to pick up an expensive reserve list card that they are able to trade up into because most value traders they wanna they wanna be trading up they wanna be consolidating the value of their cards into a more valuable card so what I'm saying is buying a moderately played guy's cradle for two hundred and seventy five dollars going to your local game shop or wherever you're able to trade cards and trading it off for three hundred and fifty is not crazy or out of the question in fact it's kinda easy and that means instead of gambling on your booster box that you're able to uh... you know instead of buying a booster box for two hundred and seventy five dollars and hoping you get lucky and you know you maybe you get four hundred or 500 but I think most people if you said look you're gonna buy a booster box for 275 and you're gonna get an extra guaranteed uh, $75 worth of value without gambling I think most people would be fairly happy with that but here's the thing we're not even done yet you can squeeze out potentially even a little bit more value by actually trading this card off for three hundred and eighty dollars how are you gonna do that well you know just a little bit of hardball not too much but when you're trading with people you just say look I'm trading my reserve list valuable very scarce card say for example down into your pile of modern rares none of which are worth more than you know 60 bucks so if I'm gonna trade down you're gonna have to give me the best price on this that we can see in the market and you might think that you know that might be difficult but again 
there are so many people that want to trade up all the MTG finance stuff out there just preaches always be trading up always be trading up so you show up with this chase valuable reserve list card and you say hey I'll trade down you got three hundred eighty dollars worth of stuff <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna find it may not happen overnight but you will find a taker and not only that they're not gonna come back the next day and be like oh you ripped me off they're gonna come back the next day and be like wow that was great I cannot wait to trade with you again so it's just one of those funny things when you start getting into cards that are really expensive you know older reserve list whatever it's it's not infrequent that you're gonna see large departures between the the near mint price differentials between the mid and market prices versus what you can actually buy and sell those cards for it's the most pronounced when you start looking at really expensive cards most of which happen to be older which means you're going to see a larger degree of variance on the conditions of those cards you know when you look at when you look at the available conditioning of cards in terms of supply for something like Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth from Ultimate Masters, almost all the copies out there are going to be near mint or slight play because it's a brand new card. It just came out. But when you look at these old expensive cards, there's going to be tons of heavy play and moderate played copies out there, which, you know, add a little more interesting dynamics to what you can do. Anyway, you're, you're going to see this also at cheaper cards. Just remember, if you have a $10 card and you're looking to trade for another $10 card, you might just take a minute to double check the the prices as far as what they're selling for on eBay, how much they're buy listing for. It's not uncommon or crazy or out of the question for two cards to be worth ten dollars, but one of them's buy listing for five dollars and the other one's buy listing for eight fifty. That's a huge difference. That that just tells you a lot of stuff. And if you see the same kind of pattern on eBay closing auctions where they're both worth the same list price, but when you actually check what they're selling for on eBay and looking at those completed listings you're seeing that there's a differential of, of price of maybe you know two or three dollars that's also really important it's not as important on the smaller cards but if you don't have a huge collection and you're really trying to get the most value it actually is pretty important to pay attention to that kind of stuff because it gives you a clue uh, a lot of time when buy lists on cards uh, start creeping up and getting closer to their list price it's an indicator that that card might be about to pop on its price. So that's just one more piece of information for you to utilize as you're trying to make these decisions on which cards to keep, which cards to trade off, and what cards you want to trade into. Now, I, I really enjoy Cardsphere. It's a great platform that I trade on. I'm just going to show you. Cardsphere is a pretty savvy, um, a pretty savvy uh, website, pretty savvy traders operating on here and, and you're going to see that they generally have accounted for all of this reasonably well so you can see that the list price for a guy's cradle here is $325 so this is even cheaper than the, the list price of 350 we find for the TCG mid price which was already lower than the market price for those of you who aren't aware Cardsphere is just a online platform for player to player trading it's great they only take a 1% cut which is really good highly recommend it anyway when we when we go down here and we look at recent trades last 10 trades let's find looks like there haven't been any okay here's a moderately played copy that went for 80% so somebody traded that off for $232.94 so going back to TCG player if you bought a moderately played copy for 270 and then tried to take it to TC, uh, and then tried to take it to Card Sphere and trade it off. You're you're just losing. You're not really getting ahead. And the interesting thing is, let's say that you buy this moderately played copy, but it comes back decent enough that you're going to be able to trade it off for um, slight played condition. When you start trading high end cards on Card Sphere, just take photos and swap them back and forth with who you're trading with to make sure they're cool with whatever condition you're grading them at. Um, you could even do this with lower valued cards, but it, it's extremely important when you start getting into more expensive stuff that's that's not near mint. Anyway, so when we look at some slight played copies, here's a slight played copy that went for 90% of its list value. Here's another slight played copy that went for 96%. And let's just look at this one at 90%. This card traded off on Cardsphere for $335. So 
if you can pick up a moderately played copy for 275 and you ship it off on card sphere for 335 and let's say you were thinking about depositing you know three hundred and thirty dollars on or I'm sorry let's say you were thinking about depositing two hundred and seventy five dollars on card sphere well this is kind of a there's no guarantees with this that it's gonna work and if it if it goes poorly and you get the you get this moderately played copy in and it's it's just right at the borderline of moderately played right above heavy played and you don't think you're gonna be able to squeeze slight play out of it on a trade on card sphere then you know you can always just take it and trade it uh, in person with a more casual player that's just going to be really happy and excited to get an old reserve list card. Uh, you might even find some people like that on Card Sphere. There's just a lot of savvy traders, so it's going to be a lot tougher, um, a lot more sticklers and such, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But if you do get this moderately played copy and it's decent enough that you might be able to. Um, you know graded at slight play because the graders on TCG player again are very conservative then you know instead of putting 275 deposit into card sphere you spend 375 on TCG player you ship off a guy's cradle at 90 percent at slight play and now you just got 335 um, maybe you don't even get that much maybe you trade it off at like 85 percent and you get 310 or something but it's just an interesting thing to look at as far as getting an extra deposit bonus makes basically I mean if you could get an extra 10 20 30 dollars cash in your account um, when you deposit it I think most people would be very excited to do that and I'm not discouraging you from uh, if you happen to trade on cards here I'm not discouraging you from just depositing cash that's a great thing to do nothing wrong with that well, what I'm talking about here has a lot more variance there's a lot more risk involved there's no guarantees on how it's going to play out uh, but I mean the other thing is when you buy a card like Guy's Cradle it's old school it's reserve list uh, you do need to be careful and know what to look for if you look around on the internet you can find some guides and information on how to check for counterfeits you're definitely going to need to check that when you're buying expensive cards like these on TCG player but if you get your hands on a real guy's cradle regardless of condition if you're buying it at the bottom floor market price on TCG player and you're not able to move it right away you're in the long run you're not really going to lose anything you know, when you get an actual, you know, reserve list staple from EDH, you're you're doing okay. You're gonna you're gonna be all right. Uh, by the way, um, uh, my two cents: don't even pay attention to vintage cards, and don't pay any attention to legacy cards. You you only want to be looking at stuff that's legal and played in EDH when it comes to these expensive, valuable cards, whether they're uh, masterpieces or just old reserve list stuff, whatever it is, make sure it sees play in EDH before you go in on it so it's in a relevant format where you can actually go and find people playing the format and trade with them. Anyway, that's that's all for today. I just wanted to talk a little bit about how just because we live in an era where everyone has access to a smartphone to pull up pricing information on cards doesn't mean that there's not still a way for you to get extra value as you're trading with people. And, and the best thing about what I'm talking about here is you're not doing anything, you know, malicious. I'll, again, you could explain exactly what you're doing with somebody, tell them everything all up front. And most people that you're trading with, if it's a scenario where you're trading them a guy's cradle again, for example, you could tell them, look, I bought this card for $275. I'm going to trade it to you for $380 or I'm not going to trade it there's a ton of people out there that that they don't have two hundred and eighty dollars cash to go buy a guy's cradle but they got a lot of junk in their binder they're not doing anything with and they don't care and it's almost never that they get an opportunity to trade into an old expensive reserve list card and so not only will they be more than happy to trade with you but they'll do it at with full disclosure uh, so it's not like you're even doing anything scumbaggy um, you'll you'll get done with the trade and they will go run and tell their friends, guys, you will not believe this person I just traded with. They are a total noob. They traded a sweet reserve list card for a pile of not reserve list cards. They didn't know what they were doing. I almost feel bad for ripping them off, but hey, you know, whatevs, right? I mean, no one's going to feel like you sharked to them. They're going to think they sharked you, even if you explain it to them. Because uh, again, there's just so many voices out there saying trade up, trade up, trade up. 
All right, that's all for today. Um, have a good one. I'm going to do a few more of these episodes of, that kind of relate to how to grind your, your paper magic collection. Um, ever since I started divesting out of magic online about a year and a half ago, uh, I've been doing a lot of grinding and paper building up a, a collection. It's been a lot of work, but it's been a lot of fun, and I just thought I would start sharing some of the tips and tricks that I used along the way. Have a good one, everybody. Peace.